Man, what the heck is music publishing, man? We're here and I'm so excited. I mean, I've known this dude for about a year. And from TV placements to super awesome production. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Anthony Clint. <laughs> What's up, dude? What's up, man? I appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. And hopefully I can share some, some information that I hope you guys. Yeah, so Clint, man, tell us exactly like, how did you get your start in this whole music space, man? Yeah, so I guess um, I was always musically inclined as a kid, um, you know, just growing up in church and playing instruments and yeah. started on the drums and um, eventually transitioned into like keyboard and things around 16, um, yeah. around 15, 16 years old. That's when I um, was, was kind of <clears throat> intrigued by the whole process of music production. And, I, yeah. you know, I had a little cheap $10 program and I would just you know, start putting loops together and things like yeah. that. And it was something that, you know, me and my friends kind of played with. And then as time went on, it just grew. We got more serious about it, started, you know, recording our own little projects. And it just kind of grew from there. And, it, and I always had this vision of, um, you know, just starting, start my own production company one day and, um, you know, just kind of producing music for, um, you know, for big artists and things like that. Did you actually produce your first, let's say, uh, let's say track or record for an artist? Um, so I guess indie artists, uh, professionally, I, I produced it, uh, I would say back in uh, about 2009, around the time I started the company, had my first indie wow. artist um, in Columbus, Ohio. Shout out to Andrew. Uh, we still keep in touch. And then my first, my first exposure to to a major um, major placement was around uh, around 2010 2011. Um, I was co-producing a record with um, with a producer, um, Scrap, um, for Music Soul Child. So that was like my first um, like major exposure to you know just the industry and and how the process works with producing yeah. a record for me. I hit me up. I had music like on MySpace and stuff and he hit me up and he was just like, hey, well, <laughs> yeah, it was a while yeah. ago, right? Yeah. Um, so he was just, he wanted me to like play keys on some of his instrumentals because he was trying to pitch them uh, for TV. And he was just telling me, he was just like, man, like this is like a whole nother market where you can start making music for TV and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I would go to his crib and just lay keys down. Um, but at the time, I didn't really get it. Like I was, I still had like you know major artists and, and things on my mind. I didn't really get that. Um, but a couple years later, it kind of clicked, and I was just like, let me see, you know, what he was talking about and, and kind of explore it. Um, and he was telling me about Taxi, and then I had signed up with them at the time um, and went out to like their road rally and and got a lot of good information out there. Um, and from then, you know, I just kind of just kind of shifted my focus and was just trying to, um, you know, trying to break into there. I didn't have any success. Um, honestly, I th the quality of my music just wasn't, it wasn't there yet. Um, so fast forward to about, you know, 2011, I, I signed a publishing deal um, with the publisher that worked, um, they, they kind of worked to get you TV placements and things like that. And I got my first um, NFL network placement through them. Um, so that was like my first TV placement. Wow. And from there, I was just like, you know, I could, this is something I can pursue. I can make, you know, another stream of income with. Yeah. And um, after I, I finished up my deal with them, like I, I decided to just really, really go hard and focus on it um, and just try and get my music uh, on as many, as many shows as possible. How important it is to to put out great content, great music, and and is it okay to record wherever you are, but do you still now have to go through a master house to sort of like work those things out? That's a good question. Um, the quality definitely, definitely matters. Um, there is, it, it's, it's easily accessible now, so everybody has, you know, FL Studio and Pro Tools and all of that. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of music online, it's a lot of producers. Um, but quality still matters, and that helps you kind of stand out amongst the competition, um, because that's that's something that will always matter, quality. Um, and yeah, literally, you can you can make music anywhere. You don't need to pay you know hundreds and thousands of dollars for a big studio these days. 
um, or even for mixing and mastering. I mean, they got services online, excuse me, where you can you can get your tracks mastered for a fee. You can yeah. get your tracks mixed. Um, I mean, mixing, mixing and mastering is a service that I offer. So, yeah. you know, everything is like online now. And, and I think it's, it's a beautiful thing because it gives um, us producers and, and artists like more control of our work. Um, right. And and it allows us to reach people all over the world. Oh, TV and film placements, do they care about making, like when you're making the first song and just presenting the song, like the music supervisor, right? Um, is it important to have those tracks fully mastered or can you like send an idea to them in a WAV file? Like, like what's that whole transition like musically? Yeah. I always recommend sending a finished and mastered track, um, especially if you're sending it to a music supervisor, because what can happen is, you know, you may send them an idea um, and it not be finished, um, or it, or I'll, I'll put it this way, you'll send them a track and they may be working on something right at that moment to where they can put that track in the scene. And if it's not mastered and it's, it's like done. half done, you can, yeah. you can miss out on that. So you want it to grab their attention. You want it to be usable right away. Um, so make sure it's, it's mixed, it's mastered. I took a class at Berkeley, Music Publishing 101. The professor kept saying that over and over and under track needs to be completed. It, it needs to be mastered as if you're selling it the next day on iTunes or on a disc. I saw uh, Keeping Up With The Kardashians. That's a pretty big brand. How did you yes, get definitely. that call and how did you feel? How, how did you land that placement on that show? Um, so I was, I was actually, I was, I was out of town. I think I had, I had reached out to a publisher previously, uh, probably weeks before and, um, I was out of town and, and I had got a call. He had hit me back. He had listened to the demo that I submitted. It was just like, yo, it's like really great work. Um, you know, I need some tracks working on this show, you know, send them to me when you can. So literally like I didn't, I had some equipment with me out there. I had my laptop and, um, you know, just like some, like a little mini keyboard. So literally like I, I, I had made tracks on the road. I didn't have any headphones. I had to go to Guitar Center and grab some headphones. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I pretty much made a batch of tracks out there and then submitted them. And then the first batch, <clears throat> he actually didn't like. He was just like, you know, I need something a little a little better. So I was like, okay, back to the drum board. Um, and then the next batch of tracks he loved and um, ended up signing to his publishing company. And then, um, I don't know, maybe, Maybe a couple months or a few months later, um, I yeah. found out that um, a lot of them were being used um, on, on keeping up with the wow. Kardashians. Clint, what is the importance of metadata? Uh, so metadata pretty much helps um, music supervisors and editors find your music. It helps um, it helps your music stand out, and it gives it like keywords. You know, so if you have an upbeat, happy party track, you want to put you know those emotions at that track has because when um you know content creators are looking for your tracks they're searching things like upbeat song or um party song or club song or just different different mm -hmm. vibes and emotions that a song would get off and that kind of helps um then you also have like the title of the track you want yeah. your your composer names um and and percentages in there oh, um the BPM, all that. exactly yeah. um your bpm um, sometimes even the key of the song, if the publisher wants that, mm. um, things that just kind of help, you know, identify the track and, and make it easy for them to know who the track belongs to and who should they contact, you know, if they want to yeah. use it. So it's really and, important. Yeah. And that's a key word, contact, because I oftentimes hear this um, out there, man, uh, people don't put their contact inf information. And I mean, if it's not there, how are you going to be reached? And so those yep. things are very important to identify the track. Uh, is, it, is it important to also put your lyrics in the metadata? Is that important? What difference does that make? 
Yeah, I would say, yeah, put it in the metadata or, or you know, some publishers, they have protocols for lyrics where you, you know, send a PDF or a Word document with the lyrics. Um, but that's important, too, because um, your lyrics are kind of like keywords, too. Like, what what is the song about? Because they may have a specific scene talking about, you know, my heart is broken, you know, how can we mend it or something like that. And then if you have your lyrics, they can kind of read it and say, okay, this song is talking about, you know, what this scene is about. So, this and that. so yeah, that's, that's good to have as well. Now, talk to us about the, the uh, mechanicals, you know, making sure that, you know, your song is completely registered with like a BMI, ASCAP, CSAC. Mm -hmm. And so every time the this, this, this show airs, um, you still get a, you still get performance royalties, correct? Correct, correct. Yeah, so, yeah, and, to get, get your performance royalties, you, you, got, you have to be registered with ASCAP, BMI, or CSAC, or yeah. in other countries they have, you know, like SOCAN. Okay. And Game so, in Germany, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you definitely want to make sure you're registered with those, because every time that show's aired, um, you're going to get a performance royalty from it. And those companies pay out, they collect, and then they pay out your performance royalty. So... Um, yeah, so literally like every time and like every network. So if you got, if the show's on like five different networks, every time it airs on each network, you're going to get paid. And then when it airs overseas, yeah. you're going to get paid for that eventually in, in, in the form world. So yeah, that's, that's important to be registered with the pro. Yeah. And, um, plus the, uh, mechanicals, if they, if the show gets on DVD or, yeah. Um, or they created some kind of a playlist for iTunes. That's another set of royalties, correct? Correct. And then your your mechanical royalties you would get through um, through Harry Fox Agency. You can sign up. To, yeah. Um, with them, making sure your like, songs are registered through Harry Fox. Yeah, and, you know, and, and it's very important, man, because we want the people to know what happens and how this thing actually works. You know, you can be a producer, which is great, but you want to stand out. Right. And you want to also have um, a publisher like myself. You want to have a producer like yourself who is sort of making sure that, make sure that you are fully protected so that when royalties are generated, they are, they're easier to be found, found in. and and I oftentimes deal with that from clients. Man, this stuff is just out of order. You know, it it's so funny how people have been in the music industry as a singer or songwriter, and bro, <laughs> I use the word PR and is it PR what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that is. Yep. You no, know, I, I asked a young lady one time. I mean, she girl can sing, bro, sing for like fifteen years. Wow. So I'm asking her which PRO is she a part of? Is it, is it, what does that mean? I said, <laughs> Polar Performance Rights Organization. Mm. And she said, she doesn't know. I said, are you a member of BMI or ASCAP? And she said, I don't know. I said, what do you mean you don't know? <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? So, you know, that, that kind of stuff trips you out sometimes. It's yeah. Important. It is. If you're taking this thing seriously, then you, you've got to just go all the way. I want to get to a place where I actually see your name on the TV screen. I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. I know that guy. Yeah, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> I just don't want to call you and then I hear click, 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 and nobody has to disconnect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, man, I don't like changing numbers, man, because everybody that has it, it's just a pain. So I try and keep yeah. the same number, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Appreciate you doing all the best. Thank you for having me. Oh, man,